More on security situation in Nigeria. Let's speak with David Otto, a counter-terrorism expert joining us from the United Kingdom. As it is in Nigeria, from uh, Kaduna to Plateau, I mean, different states across the country, we're hearing of uh, different forms of attacks. And just hours ago, the federal government, through the Ministry of Information, mentioned that the particular attack on the Kaduna Abuja train is a result of collaboration between Boko Haram terrorists and the bandits. Where do you think this puts the war on terror in Nigeria? I think it changes the whole dynamic. Um, Nigeria, of course, has been uh, facing an insurgency by Boko Haram, you know, for more than a decade. And there has, of course, been a displacement uh, of the former Jazz faction. That's the uh, faction of the slain Abu Bakr Shikau. And they have moved uh, some of uh, the members to refuse to join the Islamic State or the so-called Islamic State of uh, West Africa province, the ISWA, uh, they've moved uh, towards uh, the north uh, western region and, and also coming towards the north central. Uh, this is a, a major concern. Um, and even if you know uh, uh, these were pure bandits, you know it will still be a major concern. But you know now that this has gone to the level uh, whereby there is a very high um, level of suspicion that Boko Haram is now fully operational uh, in, in that part of, uh, uh, in some parts of the uh, northwest, uh, but also moving towards the north central. Now, uh, it changes the dynamics of counter uh, ins insurgency operations. Of course, it therefore means that um, uh, the Nigerian military has to be at the forefront of this. Um, it also calls for uh, other uh, sister agencies, you know, to work. Um, you know, uh, in collaboration uh, to be able to deal with this menace. Mm -hmm. But it comes at a very critical time as well, we have to note. Um, the time when uh, the Nigerian authorities will be focusing a lot more attention on, on the upcoming elections, uh, presidential elections in 2023. Um, but again, you know, insecurity, it's a major issue and it has to be dealt with, irrespective of the timing that is, you know, happening as we speak. Indeed, Mr. Otto, one of the strategies that the federal government is uh, employing to tackle insecurity in the country is granting amnesty to repentant members of the Boko Haram sect. How effective would you say that has been in curbing this menace? Well, I think what is very important to note is that um, granting amnesty is just one aspect of uh, counterinsurgency, and it has to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, uh, people join terrorist organizations for different reasons, and they have different economic and social uh, circumstances. It's not a blanket approach. Uh, it is not for everyone to be granted an amnesty. It has to be based on individual case assessment. Um, once these uh, uh, so-called suspects of Boko Haram are in the custody of the security services, there has to be a thorough investigation to determine uh, the people who uh, will be granted amnesty and the people who will not. I mean, we've seen uh, also in the southern part of the country um, that, you know, amnesty is not necessarily a long-lasting solution, uh, you know, if the right individuals um, are not, you know, um, involved in that. You know, sometimes, you know, people would seek for amnesty because they want to escape justice. They want to escape, you know, the uh, hands of the law. So this is not a you know, blanket strategy. I mean, there are so many ways of dealing uh, with, um, you, know, uh, you know, terrorists that are captured by the government. It doesn't have to be a, a, a one-size-fits-all approach. Mm. And indeed, well, that would speak to, when one considers the carrot and stick approach, that would speak to the carrot approach. Talking about the stick approach, after the Kaduna train incident, the governor of Kaduna, Nasser El Rafai, mentioned that the hideouts of the bandits are well known to security agencies. But one reason they have uh, not striked is that uh, they are trying to avoid collateral damage. How do we marry all of these factors and still ensure that we are able to deal decisively with this uh, uh, very serious challenge of insecurity? I think it's very important to know that um, the Nigerian army uh, has recently, uh, well, not very recently, um, you know, adheres to uh, the human rights uh, approach, which is, you know, trying as much as possible uh, to avoid uh, civilian casualties. I mean, we've seen occasions when civilian casualties are 
uh, have been um, experienced, you know, the backlash that it comes, you know, in the battle of hearts and minds. And it is not only that, you know, when these bandits, you know, capture or kidnap, um, you know, people from, you know, the, the streets or from trains, they take them to these locations and they use them as human shields. So it becomes very challenging uh, for the military to be expected to bomb, you know, or target these locations. Because then, of course, you know, you're risking uh, the lives of those who are innocent. Um, I think, you know, it's uh, in terms of operations, I think, you know, when it comes to counterinsurgency, it has to be purely intelligence led and very, very precise and, and uh, you know, a precision led operations. It shouldn't be um, a reactive, you know, approach. You know, so I think there has been a lot of lessons learned uh, by the Nigerian army in dealing with Boko Haram in the Northeast. You know, I should expect. Uh, that, you know, the operations that will be launched in the Northwest it will be slightly different. Uh, they will avoid uh, civilian casualties. Uh, but, but also, I think the most important thing is for the security services to win the hearts and minds of the local people. They are the ones, you know, who will bear the fruits. They are the ones who will give the right information and the right intelligence. But I don't believe that uh, just bombing those locations, you know, is the best way to go about it. You know, there has to be some much more um, you know, uh, precise intelligence-led operations, you know, that will limit the level of civilian casualties. Mm, all right. When you talk about uh, winning the minds of the local people, if we may again use the Kaduna train incident as an example, families of those who are still in the captivity of uh, the bandits or call them terrorists, uh, calling on government, as at uh, yesterday, they were giving them a 72-hour ultimatum to rescue their loved ones unhurt, or else they would resort to whatever can help them get their relatives back. In this situation, would you suggest a ransom payment as a way of solving this? The, the way that it works in security is that, you know, uh, if you fail in preventing an incident like that of the uh, the train between uh, Abuja and Kaduna from happening. Um, the responsibility becomes, you know, uh, solely in the hands of the bandits who have them. You know, they will make a decision because, of course, they've been successful um, and the state has failed in, in preventing that attack from happening. Now, as a loved one, you know, or a relative of somebody who is being captured or kidnapped, what people want is that, you know, their relatives or friends or brothers or sisters or children are released uh, by these bandits, whatever it takes. Now, if I, if I were to advise anyone, is that, you know, um, I would not take out uh, paying ransom from the table because, of course, um, we are now doing reaction. Uh, the, the only way that you can stop paying ransom is if you uh, carry out uh, a precision strike and you successfully um, eliminate uh, these so-called bandits or terrorists, and then you can rescue the loved ones. But the, the, the risk is very high. And, you know, it has to be an operation that uh, has to be looked at from a risk balance metrics. You know, but, you know, I, I wouldn't take out paying ransom because, of course, um, you know, we are all humans. You know, once your relatives have been taken, you want to make sure that they get released, irrespective um, of whether a ransom is paid or not. I that think what the well government done. has to be looking at now is stopping uh, these um, attacks from happening rather than you know, reacting against the payment of ransom. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. David Otto, counterterrorism expert, who joined us from the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. Thank you.